Hi, people. This is DJ. This is Ish. And this is season, season three, three of, of Better Let, Let Me Tell, tell You. you. Is a picture when he started. No, no, no. Like a picture of him, and then the uh, other, like they took Mm -hmm. uh, that I said class of 2032, and then in the other, yes, yes, I know. And then in the (laughs) other one, it's like a handwritten note to each one of them, like made out to each one of them. Like this one sent a generic poem on like blue paper, (laughs) and call it a day, and call it a day. So you know. (laughs) Well, for those of you who are listening... Oh my gosh, I didn't expect that to be recorded. Ah. I mean, I never expect it to be recorded. You see? But I have to. I have to do that because we are back together again. What song should we sing? I don't know. I'm trying to make sure this... Because tonight is the night (laughs) where to become one. Not like that, though. No, not like that. Not in that way. But in the way that this is not, as you can probably tell by the quality of the the audio on both ends, it is not a Zoom. It is not a Skype. It is not a phone call. It is our regular recording. We are back together. So we had been talking in the last couple of weeks since restrictions had been easing up. When were we going to start recording again? Because you and I have been very good about... We really have. We, 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 we really, really have, have about yeah. the social distancing. I mean, as I said, I've gone to three places. <laughs> Publix, Trader Joe's, and Kmart. And the reason I've gone to Kmart... Yeah, why Kmart? Because there's nobody at Kmart. So you could go by... I went to Target. Man, not even in a pandemic, people were shopping at Well, Kmart? there's more. There's more. But oh. like... And it's funny because the lady at Kmart is like, yeah, like this is full now compared to before. <laughs> I went to Target a couple of times mm-hmm. and the one in Kendall yeah, yeah. and West Kendall. And it's like they were like giving out the last. It was like the people waiting for the last helicopter in the fall of Saigon. Like, oh, no, it was like that, you know. Good Lord. Um, so I was like, yeah, no, you no, know, no. so that's it. And Tristan loves it. He calls it K-Market. And he K-Market? thinks it's like the greatest store <laughs> <laughs> so it's like I love Kmart. At the one remaining Kmart left in Miami, is that the one? Uh, that's the one on Kendall Drive. On Kendall Drive and, and La Yeah, people. where Dorado's at, and where Miami yeah. Subs is at. Yes, yes, yes. So yep. every time I go, I go to Miami Subs. But anyway, <laughs> but we've been very good about social distancing. We have. We have. So we were like, okay, you know, we're not having pool parties like all those people during Memorial Day, right? Or you know, balcony parties in downtown Miami, right? So. But, you know, everything has eased up a bit, and so we decided to, it was about time to start recording. Although there's always a certain distance, because you're on the other side of the desk. Right, there's a, there's a look, we're about as social distance as if we were to go out to dinner. But I haven't gone to dinner. But if we were to go out to dinner and be at the same table. Right, or, or I, as I like to think, the deli line at Publix. The deli line at Publix? Yeah, because that's usually when I'm around the most people. <laughs> Oh yeah, even in the pandemic, you have to have your boar's head. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Have, no you had the, have you had the new Aloha boar, boar's head? I have the it's, Hawaiian one. Yeah. Oh my gosh, I'm like, I need to close my eyes and think I'm in Hawaii, like in the commercial. <laughs> <laughs> but my, I mean, I have imagination, but it will only take me so far. That's true. Oh, what? speaking of imagination, well, uh, well, welcome wait, wait. to episode 112, everyone. <laughs> episode 112, Caballero. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome back, welcome everyone. Back. Welcome episode back. and welcome back to you. I feel like it's okay. I know it sounds really weird and funny and whatever, but it's true. Like it's bizarre that I haven't seen you like in person, in person. Like you know, I did a, when you dropped off the cake. Yeah. And I dropped, uh, like I see him passing, but, but like very quick. But like this, it feels. It feels weird to not have gone it like two months like without seeing you. The Michigan and New York years, mm. yeah, all like smushed into two months. <laughs> so if it's the Michigan and New York years, it's that like means five we years to, we have to go out to dinner every day because when we would be when I would That's come true. home from Michigan, and, like and everybody, yeah, know, like the week or two weeks I was here, it's like every day I would go out to eat. But anyway, so everybody, welcome to 100 episode 112. Yes, we hope everybody's hanging in there. We have a lot to talk about. I feel like um, it's a mirage. I'm not gonna lie. It's a like, mirage. Like I'm looking at you and I'm like, is he really here? Am I a beach? <laughs> With palm trees. There's a palm tree behind you and a, nice, palm tree. a nice little lake. Um so the other day I I was on Netflix and I'm like, I'm Ida. Willy Wonka on the Chocolate Factory is on Netflix. The original? The original. Okay. Would I watch the new one? Well, I don't know where the story's going. <laughs> because I I love that movie. That's one of my favorite movies. Would I even Dare to watch that garbage that I hated the new one. Fair enough, the new one was bad, but I don't know where the story's going. Anyway, so 
I go to Tristan, you know, because since Tristan and I, during the day, are together, you know, like... That's true. You guys are like Cisco and Eber. Yes. So, I'm like, you know what, Tristan? I'm going to show you what happens to bad kids. He'd never seen it before. He had never seen it. So, I put the scene of Veruca Salt, you know, because... Veruca Salt, you want to talk about big bad bitch? She's, she's the biggest bad she's, bitch. But she's the epitome of like tremenda chiquita macria. So like, yeah, so it, it encompasses everything. But the thing about her is that, and I don't know if like this was like on point in terms of the, how they wrote the script or if they let mm-hmm. her ad lib a little bit, but she was like such a like pure evil bitch. Well, I like, mean, there's a reason that nobody's ever started a band called Augustus Gloop. <laughs> but they did Veruca <laughs> Salt. But anyway, so I showed him the scene of the furnace and and he's like, wait, does she get sent to the furnace? I go, yeah, that's what happens to bad kids. He's like, oh, so she got, she, he was like very traumatized by good, it. Good, good. And, and then I showed, I showed him the blueberry and I'm like, oh, now she's going to be squeezed. He's like, but does she die? And I go, well, yeah. So I, I, I made it a little bit more morbid. But he was like, well, th- no, those children probably did not survive. So I was like, so he's like, I want to watch the whole movie. So now in the four last four days, he's watched it every day, and he loves every it. day. He loves, and I'm like, yes, score. <laughs> how, how does he feel about the tunnel with the chicken getting its head cut off? Actually, the, that part doesn't that he hasn't really it he hasn't noticed it. He just really questions each child's demise. Like uh, Augustus, he's like. Uh, but but did he get squished and like in the tube? Like what happened to his like, organs? Like like this is what he's asking. He's like, what happened to his organs when he was in that tube? Because he doesn't fit in that tube. And I'm like, yeah, exactly. that's the point. That's the and point. then Veruca, he's like, he's like, she got sent to the furnace. And I'm like, yep, that's what happens when you're a bad egg. <laughs> I love. I love it. Okay, that movie. I don't know if they did this on purpose in terms of the dark humor of the movie. I don't know if it was on purpose. Well, have you ever read the book? No, the book is pretty dark. So, I, I, so I mean, maybe read, it was on yeah, purpose. Yeah. But I love like the little comments here and there, like when Veru the when Veruca goes down the furnace and then her dad goes. I love que viejo. Charlie's dad is like, well, he got what he always wanted. Veruca won first. <laughs> I was like, coño, that's pretty morbid. <laughs> Yeah, but remember, these books were written by Roald Dahl, and he's British. And you know British sense of humor is very caustic. Do you know something funny about Willy Wonka? That's one of my favorite movies. And I actually saw the movie for the first time when I was 20. Really? I hadn't seen it when I was a kid. Ever? Really? No, yeah. remember, my parents didn't know the Beatles. I, I oh, had to figure true. I had to figure everything out on my own. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, fair enough. Yeah, they that's, know the Beatles. That's Charlie, like, the do you know why I know the songs of The Sound of Music? Like, do a no. deer, a female deer, because of Full House. Because they have an episode oh. where they start singing that song. And yeah, that's yeah, yeah. why I knew that song. Because, you know, my parents are from Galo Roja. They're like, <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway, everybody out there, how was this week? How was the Miami tsunami? Oh, my God. Everybody else, because I've, I've been talking about my, my coworkers. Everything like, flooded. It wasn't it was only crazy. Hialeah this it time. It was crazy. <laughs> like, other people, like, in Chicago were like... Oh, the weather was so nice this week, long weekend. Finally, we went out and it was lovely. And I'm like, yeah, you know, just poured here. Don't you think it's like ironic that the all the time of the quarantine, at, at least here, the weather was amazing. Oh, it was. It was like breezy. It wasn't I had too a tan. hot. El momento that they started to ease up restrictions, por lo menos in South Florida. Mother they, Nature, they were like, they yo. were like, no, 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 no. Mother Nature was like, no, no, no children. We're not no. having that, which I guess is good for the non-social distancing. Porque, you know, Aira and this Memorial Day, you know, all the images of everybody partying. If it would have been raining down here, you know, Miami would have been in that Oh, list. they would have been in Entonces Memorial Day, yeah. Oh, yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I was going to say something really dated. It's going to be like, you know, people are going to be living it up in Penrods. Oh my God, I was just thinking of Penrods. <laughs> I was thinking of Penrods. How? Okay. Wow. Thirty years. I know, but it's nice to know that even though we haven't been recording together, it's still there. <laughs> Which now is Nikki Beach. It's that right now. Which everybody said Nikki Beach, not N- Nikki N- Beach. Nikki, no, it's Nikki Beach. <laughs> Nikki Beach. Nikki. That's like my friend. Uh, well, Roly. For the longest time, he had a, a little dog, a little mini pincer, mm-hmm. and the dog's name. Nobody ever called it Cookie. It was always Cookie. 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 Even though it was. Cookie. cookie. Like, it was cookie, but everybody was like, I cookie. I cookie. love that cookie. So, yeah, yeah, that's what we do. So, yeah, I mean, f- uh, d- d- these floods were pretty massive. I, mean, oh, yeah. I can't remember until the yesterday, last time. Until yesterday here in the Gables, there were some streets that had to be rerouted. Yeah. 
I had to be rerouted as I was driving back. And it was like, this was worse than Irene in 98. Do you remember Irene in 98? That, it yes. happened in my birthday. <laughs> yes, that I got, I got my car was stranded in the middle of Miller Drive. Yeah, and my car floated. I was like, oh, my car's buoyant. Well, there's that. <laughs> That's a thing that just My car happened. actually had water damage. <laughs> no, yeah, it was pretty bad. It was pretty bad across the board. But it's funny because like, I mean, we're commenting about it, and we're kind of laughing about it, and Only in Dade, the videos from Only oh in my Dade God. were- Did they Deepo that was like boogie boarding behind a car on the expressway? Which one? Because there was a bunch of <laughs> on them. On the freaking expressway. <laughs> the videos from Only in Dade were priceless. So Only in Dade, thank you so much for that. Yes. But it's funny, like, we'll laugh about it or whatever, but it's still like business as usual. It's like, oh, you know. Yeah, whatever. It's just what, it's just what we do. It's Miami raining flood. It's like, whatever. Yeah, yeah, I mean, it's just, it is what it is. I mean, it's like, I had, again, somebody was, was commenting like, oh- you know, luckily it's nice. My AC, you know, got busted this weekend and it's, you know, it's like in the seventies or whatever. I'm like, yeah, we don't have that option. Like if our AC gets busted, you open the window and you hope that it's pouring that rain. Yeah. Porque por lo menos pasa un poco de fresco because otherwise, nope. Nope. You go sleep at somebody else's house. I'm dealing with that shit. Hell yeah. If my AC breaks, in the, especially in the middle of summer, I'm sleeping, I'm sleeping at Walmart. I'll sleep anywhere else. I'm not sitting, <laughs> con ese calor. No, 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 no. Well, for the record, since, since Jose lives in the same building as me, you are more than welcome. You guys are more than welcome to yes. come over here. Yes, and- yes. And and live it up. Yes. Um, get the you out of the seat. But yeah. Well, but you also had an interesting week. Oh, well. You had an incident this week, too. So, no, I thought I was having a heart attack. But, you know, it was okay. But, but it turned out to be you just rode your bike too much. Right, because I got a bike. <laughs> so, I never, I, I don't have indigestion. I've been, I've been there. I don't have indigestion. So, I'm not that type of person that gets, like, chest pains. Yeah. And you don't have, like, reflux. So. I, I don't have none of that. Um... Because I know a lot of times heartburn feels well, yeah, like a I have, chest pain. I have reflux. And and, and I had time. this chest pain on like I'm Saturday. I'm having it right now. <laughs> I had this chest pain on Saturday. And I, you know, with things of the heart, I'm very, very careful as you should. Right. Because like my parents both have had heart issues. And, and you know, I I keep forgetting that I'm not 25. Yep. Um, as much as in denial of I, I am about it. We are of a certain age. But, um, you know, I was like, you know what? I'm going to call 911. And I called 911 and they told me, you know, you should go to urgent care. And I did. And thankfully, it was nothing. But I thought about you because you've been to Ur- – so everybody, I was fine. I was okay. I, I think that I just felt something on my chest because I had bought a bike a couple of days earlier. And it's like this huge – No, it was that same day. Or like that Saturday. same day. I went <laughs> riding and it was like this huge mountain bike, which, you know, the logistics of it are very different than your regular bike. Right. So like the positioning of, of the arms, everything of the body, of the chest yeah. is very different. And um, I think it was maybe that. But it reminded me of Ish because there's been a couple of <laughs> – times that he's like my chest hurts i think i'm having a heart attack let's go to urgent care but the thing is that he says it like one day i literally picked him up and i picked him up i'm like hey how are you doing he's like you know my chest hurts um take me to the hospital and i was like oh, okay but what i think is funny is that how like calmly calmly and nonchalant about it you are well because in ese momento like if you're already thinking, I mean, we're not doctors, but if you're already thinking you're having a heart attack, going crazy about it is really not going to help the situation. Oh, my God. So when I'm there, when I'm, like, going to the urgent care, I'm like, oh, my God. It was, like, 530 in the morning. There was nobody there. I'm That's not, a good thing. I have to call my parents. I was like, how is this going to go? Did you? I did. I call my parents, and my father gets the phone. <laughs> Get paso! <laughs> Well, yeah, because at six in the morning, there's nothing, there's no good news. And I'm like, Papa, no te asuste. And yeah, I hear my mom in the morning. I'm like, it's okay. You know, whatever. But yeah, boy, and I'm like, Dad, they don't They're let anybody let, in. Yeah, yeah, because so of all this COVID. So I'm, I'm okay. I'm going to be calling you and texting you, whatever. But thankfully, everything was okay. So yeah, floods and heart attacks. It's just a typical week. It's just, you know, a long weekend. <laughs> it's a typical Memorial Day. <laughs> but yeah, the, como dice la canción de Will Smith, those... Um, those uh, thunderstorms rain, 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 rain storms storms are nothing to mess, mess with, with, but I can't feel a drip on the strip. It's a trip. Well, we did feel a drip. We felt several drips. <laughs> <A> tsunami. <laughs> <laughs> um, so let's talk about some <laughs> hot topics, yes, if we cur- shall. Cur- current so, events. So, viste la racista de Central Park? <laughs> oh, God. I mean, look. What she did was horrible, and she's a total racist or whatever. But I'm just—I'm gonna say something that I'm not putting the blame on the guy. Mm-hmm. But I will say that if it was me, and I had seen somebody without a dog on the—you know—the leash or whatever, I wouldn't have said anything. That's like so. That attitude that you have is about another 
conversation I want to have about something else. Okay. But okay. um, okay. so you wouldn't have said anything. I wouldn't have said anything. That's I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna say like again. That's like if right now if I go to the store and somebody doesn't have a mask on, like. I'm like, you're not wearing a mask. Why aren't you wearing a mask? You should be wearing a mask. It's just like, so you're not you know going to be, you're not going to be barbecue Betty. <laughs> I'm not going to be barbecue Betty. Look, number one, I have my mask on and my people have their mask on and we're fine. If you want to be maskless, knock yourself out. Number two, tú no sabes la pila de logo que están afuera. Que somebody has a, a well, gun so, or something. So what happened with, gets fed but up. But what happened and, with this particular situation is that he was a bird watcher. He's a bird watcher. Yes, I know. He's a bird and, watcher. He's and actually the, also a former Marvel Comics editor. Oh, well, there we go. Um, and he, he was a bird watcher. And the area, that specific area of Central Park you where have it happened, it, it, the, the, the you have to leash everywhere. because of the birds. The birds. Right, right. Because that's where people go to bird watch. And, right. you know, the dogs can startle the birds. And he said that there had been a lot of incidents mm-hmm. of, of people mm-hmm. in that specific area right. not... Because I started to think um, what part of Central Park that was. And and I'm thinking like the more popular parts of Central like the, Park. Like the Grand Lawn and it, all that stuff. It can't stuff, be yeah. that part because, I mean, there's so much going on there. But I, I don't know actually that specific part right. of Central Park. Well, I mean, Park. we're not bird watchers. But apparently that's a very a more secluded area. And mm-hmm. there have been a lot of people, maybe because it is more secluded, that that's where they go take their dogs or their dogs unleashed. Because right, there, are, right. there are parts of Central Park where you can have your dog unleashed. Well, like the dog park areas and things like that. So anyway... So I understand his. Yes, I. I'm. I'm also the type that I'm not. I wouldn't be like if I see somebody breaking the rules like that. I'm not gonna be like, hey, you know. But in his. But he didn't do anything wrong. I mean, I mean. But in his particular clear. case, in his particular case, because he is a bird watcher, like this is what he does. Right, that's his hobby. The, right. This wasn't something in passing, right? Because I, I get a little bit insulted or a, like pissed off when it's somebody in passing that's like hey you know you're using a charcoal barbecue call the cops or hey you know you're not supposed to be sitting okay there. this was a case where this this was interrupting what he was doing what, what he was doing and he's done okay. before and he said that there had been a lot of incidents of it mm. so so we all know what happened this is what i find really interesting about this case and i'm really glad that this case has reached a national like level and it went mm-hmm. viral and people are having conversations about it like we're having now she is an educated person from New York. Yeah, she was like she's an she, investment banker. She's a hedge fund manager. Hedge fund manager. She um, and a high ranking stu- one. Uh, she studied at the University of Chicago. She voted for Obama uh, twice. I think she even donated to the Obama campaign. Wow, how do we know all that? That's all public record. Oh, like your political um, contributions. That's well, contributions. Record. Yeah, yeah. yeah but- so this is somebody because when you think of somebody who's racist, what do you always think of? You always think of oh, somebody from the, the, ba- south, the backwater, hick. uneducated, right, ignorant. Right. You know that's what you think. But no, you're talking about New York, educated, a little bougie, right? Right. You know, she probably has a avocado toast, right? And look what happened. Well, look what, look what she rose. Look, look what she defaulted to. Right. When they right. because when they told her to do something, that she went do. from two people arguing about something. Trivial, you could say. I mean, at the end of the day, yeah. To her weaponizing their race, right? And when and this choking first, a dog in the so th- so this is this was my reaction to it. When I first heard about this, I actually, I guess, I found out about it that day later that day, and by the time that I had found out about it, she either had been fired or had been suspended. And when when I first first saw the tape i only had i don't know why i only heard the part where she called and said an african-american man is um Mm. i just heard that part an african-american man and i thought that she said that because the the dispatcher had asked her what race is the person okay you you you. assumed it was a back and forth i I didn't i I guess i I tuned in at the wrong part of the video Mm -hmm. because that's what i thought i thought oh you know maybe the person the dispatcher give me a description of the person you know what does a person look like she was an african-american man i didn't hear the rest of the tape but when i went back and listened to the rest of it and then i'm like okay she got fired all this stuff i'm like yeah yeah, she deserved to get fired because the problem is that she just didn't say, oh, it's an African-American man. She said, it's an African-American man that is attacking me. That is threatening, threatening me and threatening my dog. Threatening me and my dog. So now you are making claims against someone that are just untrue. Like right. this, you know, it's like it kept getting elevated and elevated with everything and that she was saying. And it's funny because had she maybe, again, she's still 
stupid bitch. But had she said harassing as opposed to threatening, maybe that would have been right. a little different. Right. So what is the person on the other line going to think? Oh, somebody's messing with her. And right, you know, being attacked. It's in her park and somebody's attacking her and in her face, which couldn't be any further from the truth. And the way that that man handled that situation, that is, I mean, yeah. I give him all the credit in he's the world. He's a professor too, right? Um, I, I don't know. I know he's Harvard educated. Um, yeah. I mean, I've seen a few or his father was a professor. He, like I mean, the man, the way that he speaks and, and the way he has spoken about this, like well, people, total well. class act. Um, but it's just... Why I think this is so shocking is because of that. Because there is somebody who I bet you that prior to that day, she would have sworn up and down that she was not a racist. Yeah. And look at what she did. Look what she defaulted to. And that is what people have to really check themselves. Because this is something I always say. Like, what, what do I... Well, you know me personally. What do people always say about me? Oh my God, you're so measured in the way that I speak. Mm -hmm. And I especially am measured when I'm upset. Because like, that's when shit goes right shaped quick. Everybody has a certain bias about anything, about mm -hmm. anything, you know, not only race, about anything, right? Mm -hmm. But there's a difference between having a bias and saying it out loud, right. whatever right. that bias may be, you know? Right. You could be biased that I think people that drive Jeeps are idiots. Like, like it could be something even something stupid. stupid. Yeah, it yeah. doesn't have to be about race. It doesn't have to be on anything. Biases sometimes are natural. I mean, it, it, there's a lot on, of factors based on that go in on your... But one thing right. is for you to think something, and another thing is for you to say something. And act upon and it. And act upon it. And she did big time. And what I thought was like, like with her, that just was so like off the wall, was like this mass hysteria that she kept building. Because by the end of the phone call, she was screaming like, oh my God. Like, like he was attacking her with like a machete. <laughs> <laughs> like she kept like she, ella se estaba dando cranque right, ella misma right, right, you know right, as we right, say yeah. ella misma se estaba dando <laughs> cranque yeah. porque he could I mean he was far away he was well spoken it's not like it's not like he was like you fucking bitch but he wasn't you even know, yelling like, at her he wasn't even yelling at her so right. and she kept escalating it on her own right and why <laughs> to the detriment of somebody and she's now weaponizing his race right. so this is why and we've talked about issues like this before on our podcast, you know, these controversial issues. That's why when people say, oh, about racism, all about that, this is an example how racism still exists. Racism doesn't have to be, you know, the, KKK. The, the overt racism that a lot of people think about, like, yeah, the KKK or white supremacists. Right. No, racism shows its face in mundane, typical, everyday situations like this one. How more trivial can you get about two people arguing about a dog leash? Yeah, really. Like, it's so inconsequential. And look what it turned into. And she was weaponizing her white privilege against him being black. And that's exactly what it was. Yeah. You know? And yeah. I hope she becomes a better person from this. You know, I, I usually don't like to kick down pe people, people when they're down. Well, he accepted her apology. He did accept her apology. You know, I don't think she should get death threats or anything like right. that. Well, he, but I, he again, class act. He accepted her apology. But, uh, he but, has come out and saying people need to stop threatening right. her. But I hope that this is a moment of self-reflection for her. And she realizes that, especially in this day and age, which is something else we're going to talk about, specifically with black men, that there's so many issues with law enforcement and things mm -hmm. like that, that w words matter and words have consequences. And you need to be very careful, especially a 911 call that's recorded. You're on the record. 911 right. calls are used as evidence in trials. Yeah, well, of course. You're on the record and you're making these false allegations about somebody that are, I mean, are crazy. So, you know... I know it's on the news and, and everybody's talking about it, but these are those little things that you're kind of go, hmm. When I, especially when I say that people, when people are like, I don't see color, I don't see color. No, you need to see color because the problem is that if you don't see color, you're trivializing, you're, 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 you're acting as if there's not a problem. You're, you're minimizing and making trivial the, problem and the experience of that person you as a white person need to understand that somebody who is black you know has a different experience in certain things than you do white privilege i know white privilege is a term du jour everybody yeah, I hate uses term, but but it, but it is something that's very real it is something that's very real and a lot of times people like don't you know they think that if they're dirt poor you know they don't have any opportunities they don't have white privilege and while they may have a Less set of struggles of yeah. they may have a set of struggles that are independent those struggles are not because they're white 
Those struggles are for other reasons, economic, the location, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, mm -hmm. certain things that have happened mm -hmm. in their life. Those struggles are not because of their color. Whereas if you're black, a lot of those struggles are because of your color. Right, mm -hmm. and that's what people, when or at the very least, compound them. That's why when people say, "Oh, I don't see color," no, you need to see color because you need to understand that that person's experience is not going to be the same, and that person mm -hmm. is going to have struggles that you're never going to have. So you need to acknowledge that person's, mm -hmm. you know, that person's reality. So yeah, if if you if you are friends with a, a black person or any person of color, you know mm -hmm. whether they're black, you know people have different experiences to varying degrees. Right. You know, Hispanic, um, Asian. I mean, if, you need to understand that those people are subject to things that maybe you are not subject to, because if you don't see that, if you don't see that, then when something like this happens, you're like, but what's the big deal, right? right. right. Or when something like all these police brutality issues you're mm -hmm. like oh maybe that was a random act no that was not a random act a random act is one maybe two but not yeah a random act is also not done by somebody who wears a hat that says make america white again that was debunked actually was it debunked yeah the moment i saw that picture i knew it was fake Really? I tried yeah. looking at it. I tried to see yeah, if it was I zoomed fake. It in. It was... I zoomed in, but I go, no, that's probably fake. But anyway, so, okay, it was a very well so done we're, moving, <laughs> we're moving into that subject. So, um, so uh, that, well, there we go. <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's, that's a situation um, with um, the case of um, a George Floyd. That's a situation where you have to understand that if you're black and you're being arrested, you are already, you know, 10 steps behind yeah. somebody who maybe is white and arrested or, or you know, being right. questioned, right? right? You, you have to understand that. And if you don't understand that, then you don't, you can't really understand what the, you know, see right. what the problem. You're going to say something like, oh, you know, it's, it's, it's random. It's unfortunate. I feel terrible for that person, but it's random. And it might not happen with every single moment, but you always have to brace yourself for that. So what, what is... You know, I think one of the reasons why in this George Floyd case, people have been so outraged is because there is video, obviously. Yeah. And um, so the video that has made its rounds is the video that... Yeah, where um, did that video come from? The, the somebody one? who was there. Because oh, you just, can hear people on the sidewalk being like, let him go. Oh, okay. You know, okay. and somebody shot it. But there's another video that was released... Um, like I today. Think, today or yesterday. Yeah. That is surveillance video. For the body cam. Um, no, not the body cam. body cam video was released. Oh, the body cam was yeah, body cam video was released. Well, the survey. Okay, well, here we go. The surveillance video that I'm talking about shows when they stopped him. Shows when he got out of the car. He was he didn't resist the. I think he was like, "What? What are you doing? You know, like, right. well, why are you? What's going on? I mean, is that resistance? I, I mean, right, right. I, I mean, do we need to define resistance? Because I think somebody being verbally aggressive, if you want to put it at worst, as to why you are. Um, arresting detaining them or, or detaining yeah. them and questioning like why are you doing this what? yeah that person is pissed off but uh, I mean that's not being aggressive right, like right. or resisting arrest right resisting arrest um, but the footage came out where like, he, he even sat on the floor at one point um, waiting for them to like I guess look him up in the system whatever mm -hmm. but it showed that he was very compliant that he was like not for all intents and purposes yeah he was not doing anything crazy crazy he wasn't resisting he wasn't to, trying to run away to he the wasn't... magnitude well I mean actually I saw um, in which this was very interesting a Enrique Santos Mm -hmm. um, interviewed the chief of, Pol of the Miami Dade Police Department, and he interviewed him on this subject. Right. Well, and, I mean, Enrique and, also a policeman, so right. right. Yeah. And and um, the, uh, we all know now that the whole thing of placing the knee on the neck mm -hmm. that is something that is not ever like that's not trained. They're not trained ever to use that technique. So that's something that he went on. on he went rogue and did it on his own. Right, that's right, not right. A, a standard, a standard procedure. technique that is ever used for policemen. But what I thought was very interesting was that the chief of police here in Miami said that even if the person was resisting arrest and even if the person was giving you a hard time, that was in the past. At that moment that you are, you know, um, that you, that person is subordinate to you and mm -hmm. you that person is on the floor right. and asking for air, whatever that person did 
before is irrelevant. So this whole defense that they're going to have that, oh, he was resisting arrest, that's irrelevant because if you have him on the floor and he can't move and he's telling you that he needs water and he can't breathe, your duty as an officer at that moment mm -hmm. is to make sure that, you know, of his safety, right? right? And we all know that you can detain someone without and, without their safety being in right, peril. Right, right, right. So... You could, they could have just picked him up and put him in the back I of the car. I just think it's absolutely awful. It's it's awful. And, and again, these cases keep popping up and they keep happening. And I... You know, I always think that I have like ideas for things. I, I, I don't know what the solution to this is. I, I don't know if it's downright racism, if it's downright um, profiling, if it's bad training. I don't know what it is, um, but something has to be done because you're not talking about one or two cases. You're talking about well, there are hundreds and hundreds of cases because yeah. these are the cases that we hear about that make the national well, news. Well, yeah, I mean, I think Will Smith, or it's been attributed to Will Smith, uh, said something uh, like, you know, racism. Well, damn, I'm going to get the quote wrong. It's not that there's more racism now, it's just that now it's being recorded. Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're just becoming more aware mm -hmm. of all these things to your, what you were saying. And even then, this is the ones that we know about. Mm hmm. Who's to say? Right. Because what do we hear about? We hear the, about, the, about the ones that end up in somebody dying. Right, right. The, right. But what, what about the ones that, you know, these men are being beat up right. and kicked Break an arm or whatever, by right? the police? And, yeah. and it's like, no, you're a police officer. And, and you know, it, it, this is something hard to talk about because, you know, I would like to think that most police officers are good people. You know, they're good people that believe in civic duty and all that. Right. But the problem is that these are people with a lot of power. Right. In their hands at one given point. So the vetting process for a police officer either needs to be changed or it needs to be reviewed or it needs to be done every couple of years. I, I, I'm not sure what the exact mm -hmm. training should be, but there is a problem. Do they have to go through a psych eval? I would imagine, right? I think. I'm not sure. That's a good question. I'm not sure. I don't, I, I don't know if they do. I don't know if they do. But it's something that needs to be changed because, I mean, it's terrible. It, 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 this case, like I saw that video like a hundred times and I just, what, what, what I fail to understand and, and this is, doesn't even have to do with race just as a human, how can you see a yes. human gasping at your control at the fact that you have your knee on their neck and you're putting your weight on it, gasping for air, you know, um, Asking for water and just the human, just as a human being, just be so like, what, you know, whatever. I'm not trying to defend that particular cop, but what I will say is, I think there's an element of when you've been a cop for so long and you see so much, you do have a certain degree of jadedness. I'm not saying it as a defense, but I'm saying it as an explanation. Right, but the, but the problem, but that goes with what I was saying. <clears throat> you know, there's some jobs that you could be jaded in, you know, but the cops are. Cops have a lot of power and responsibility in their hands at one given point. And they have to make des snap decisions that can be life and death for them and for somebody else. So I, to me, I don't hold them to the, the same standard I'm as not, I do to I'm somebody not, I'm else. I'm not saying that I do, but I'm just saying that's... So if you're jaded, then you shouldn't be a cop. Or be on desk duty. Or, or be on desk duty or be an investigator. There's a million things under the police department, under the police umbrella that you can do. You be then don't be out on the, out on the streets. Then yeah. that's not the place for you at that point. You did your service, good for you, I, you know. But if you're jaded and you're over it, then do something else because you're being over it and your jadedness is going to cost a life. Can be somebody's life or safety. And Joel, you know, I don't know now with the coronavirus, but you know I'm all about protesting. I mean, <laughs> if there's a protest here, I'm the first one to go because you know that's how you guys should done. Yeah. Un unfortunately, that's how you guys should done. That's true. So, you know, hoping hoping there's some change and there's some something good comes out of something so terrible because so I that I mean, I, at least me personally, in terms of people that I know, people that I not that I didn't expect would say something, just people that just never have opinions about anything <laughs> one way or another <laughs> have been very opinionated about this, like the brutality of it, you know, right. the inhumanity right. of it. People that I'm like, 
Like you, 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 have you, you, you this? you have no opinion about anything. <laughs> like <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm great to see you're on the right side of it, but it's like, oh, oh okay. <laughs> okay. So this, this prompted a reaction again okay, because okay. there's a video and you see a man literally dying. dying you know, dying. like, and I think there's something to seeing somebody gasping for air. That is is impactante. that is especially right impacting. Then mm-hmm. it's like somebody got shot or something. Because somebody gasping for air is like somebody like literally. You can imagine that. Yeah, you can imagine that. It's you like literally somebody we, fighting to breathe to we, stay we've alive. We've all had that moment, whether it's something as silly as, you know, we went for a run and we're out of breath. Or, absolutely yeah. horrible. Yeah. Absolutely horrible. So. Yeah. But well, we will, we'll, we'll, we're going to take a break for a sponsor. Uh, for a little, hopefully when we come back, we'll have some we'll have slightly more, lighter, lighter topics. topics. But uh, we'll, we'll be back <laughs> right after this. Ah, uh, May. La Primavera, flowers in bloom, and even better? It's National Burger Month, and Cuban Guys Restaurants has got the best way to celebrate. During National Burger Month, order a burger crafted by our own Burger Beast from the Cuban Guys locations in Hialeah, Kendall, and Miramar. Just jump online, you can go to cubanguysrestaurants.com, or even order through Facebook Messenger, and get a delicious Burger Beast burger for pickup or delivery. Mira, you have so many options. You can get a traditional Beast Burger. You can get a Beast Burger a caballo, which means it's got a fried egg on it. That's so damn good. You can get the Georgie Boy, which not only includes tartar sauce, but also features Burger Beast's signature Beast sauce. Yeah, it is a ketchup that has guava, sriracha, and I I don't even have words to tell you how delicious it is. And you can buy a bottle through Cuban Guys restaurants too. Cuban Guys also offers fritas, sandwich cubano, medianoche, un toton sandwich. I mean, the options are endless. And because there's so much to try, why not use promo code PERO and get 10% off your total order? Cuban Guys restaurants, Burger Beast, and 10% off with promo code PERO? I'm just saying, that sounds like the perfect Miami combo to us. Cuban Guys restaurants, it's not just fast food, it's awesome food fast. And we're back. Hi, everyone. How's everybody's commute? So are more people like driving now? Based on the amount of people that I see when I go for my midday jog, yes. So I actually have to look both ways before crossing the so street So this now. week, I've, I've been working out of home, but I go to the office on Wednesdays. Um, and this week, I left the you know my office, as everybody knows, is in Hialeah. I left the office at like 4.30. Mm-hmm. I got traffic on the Palmetto. I got traffic... Still not as bad as, you know, uh, you a know, typical pre uh, CV, right? B- pre BC, <laughs> CV, B- before well, Corona, no, CV, be- before Corona, yeah, BC, BC before, before Corona. Corona. Yeah. Um, still not as bad, w- be- worse, obviously, than when we were in full yeah. quarantine, but not as bad as before. Yeah, no, no, so. it was pretty bad. I went up to uh, my apartment because I just got it rented out, and 95 had mm. traffic. And when this whole started, that I was going up there to do mm-hmm. some repairs. I was getting there in like 10 minutes. Tú sabes como la gente de aquí de Miami son que after not driving for a couple of months, mm-hmm. they probably forgot how to drive. Oh, yeah. well, it's they, time they, to send them, they didn't know how to drive to begin with. It's time to send them to mi abuelo driving school. It's, you can have mi abuelo, mi abuelo sister, mi, mi abuelo, abuelo cousin. And mi, mi abuelo, abuelo nephew-in-law. Nephew in nephew-in-law. <laughs> I wonder if Perejir is still there. <laughs> I know it's been a while. He probably uh, moved up the, the ladder. Some of you may not know what we're talking about, but, but for the ones that do... do so that's a Que Pasa USA Those reference. That's one of our favorite Que Pasa USA uh, episodes. <laughs> yeah, what a driving school. Tú vas a decir que en un driving school <laughs> cubana no dejan que yo ponga un San Judas Tadeo en el carro. En un driving school cubano. <laughs> the crazy woman drivers. Oh, God. The hysterical crazy woman driver. The hysterical crazy woman drivers. Okay, so I had a conversation earlier this week that when I was having the conversation, I was like, this is totally a topic for a podcast, for the pod, for our podcast. Okay. And you kind of shed light on, on it coincidentally in our earlier conversation. So you, well, you've been to parties I've had in my house, right? Yes, yeah. And so let me ask you this point blank. So let's say it's Saturday. It's Saturday. And your neighbor is having a party. And it's loud. You could hear it. I would not. I would not call the cops. You would not call the cops? I would not. But let me preface it by saying that my sister and I did that once. Because across the street, we were maybe like in our 
like we were like 19 or whatever across the street from us they didn't tremenda pachanga but it was all like underage kids they had parked all on our lawn the kids were drinking like on our front lawn so i was like oh, oh okay no no, no that's a different I'm situation like, i'm like no 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 no, no. Esto, yeah yeah they, they were they were on my property yeah they were on your property no 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 that's so something different. but that's, that's the something. only time other than that no no no, no, no. that's um, that's a di- different different thing i i would i mean yeah if you're on my property drinking like what the hell like, yeah. and they're underage and they're that's a whole to- totally different thing so you wouldn't call either? No, no, because I've been on the other side. Right. It's funny because because the, 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 the I was talking to a good friend and he was like, um, "But have you been in my house when I had parties?" Wait, wait, wait. And he he, <laughs> he 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 was like, "Yeah, it was like two a.m. and I called the cops and like he even got on like, a Saturday on a Saturday and and he even got like the um, the landlord's like phone number." So they could keep it down. Like, he'll call the landlord. And I was like, very respectfully, I was like, yeah, no, I wouldn't but do that. But was this in an apartment? In a house? No, in like a house. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, okay, so okay. it was like the back door neighbor. Okay. 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 Right? I'm like, I would never do that. And then you know what I thought about? I thought about, remember my when I turned 21, or no, 22, that I had a huge party? Do you remember when you turned 22? Yeah. No, no, it was 21, my friend, because that's the day. No, 21 that, is when I got really drunk. Really but drunk. 22 was when I had the really big party ah, okay. yeah, yeah, that you helped yeah. me fix the backyard and all yes, that. Yes. Remember that I had a DJ yeah. and we had a huge party at my Total parents' house. Yeah. And remember somebody called the cops? Well, yeah. And I knew who it was. And me and my friend Carrie and my um, another friend of mine, we went to the person's house and knocked out their door. Wait, <laughs> and we're like, wait, why do you have a problem? On. Hold on. Was it the front door neighbor? No. It was backside diagonal. Okay, okay, okay. And I okay, went, okay. I because I knew who it was. I knew who it was. And I went, I knocked on his door. By this time, it was like 1 o'clock in the morning. <laughs> I knocked on his door. I go, do you have a problem with my party? <laughs> and I remember he was like, oh, this is a working class neighborhood. You know, we, I'm like, first of all, it's Saturday. And at that point, we have lived in this neighborhood like 30 years. A so working don't class me, neighborhood? So don't, like, don't give me this whole thing about, you know, like you want to... You have to wake up to go to the steel You want to put the rule of law here because you've been here yeah, a million years? This is not the town of Footloose. Right. It's like, exactly. It's like, I've been, my parents have lived here for 30 years so what's the problem yeah no we got us we got well again you were probably at my parents house we got the cops called on us but it was always like for some reason it was always like a younger cop who would just kind of show up and just be like just turn the music down a little bit yeah. no i remember when the like, cops when the cops came like to they, my, like like they don't care but they have to go right. i remember when the cops came to my house to my house at that party right. do you remember when the cops came i remember the cop was i like, don't remember but I'm, i remember I, I remember the cop was like look i'm I, I have to come. I have, I have to, to come. Be here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have to yeah. tell you that you have to put it down because it is what it is. But yeah, somebody called and ruined your party. Yeah. So I was like, oh hell no! I was like, oh hell no! And it's <laughs> funny because I'm a neighbor's dream. Because do you remember you when are. I lived? Do you remember when I lived in the building? Yeah, in Marina Blue. Remember that the neighbor down the street was always smoking pot, and yes. you could smell it in my apartment. Yeah, and I hate the smell of weed. I'm sorry. To, you know, the stoners out there, you be happy, but I hate the smell of weed. And it smelled like weed in my it's, apartment. It's funny because I don't mind the use of weed, but I don't like the smell of it. I, I don't like the smell. Yeah. And it was always smelling like weed in my apartment. And I'm, and I was, I was like, what am I going to do? Like, he's my neighbor and he's, he's in he, his apartment. And he's in, he's in his apartment. He's a, r- a really nice guy. You know, I'm not going to ruin his fun. Yeah. <laughs> he's, he smokes pot. We all have our I'm thing. Gonna, like, I'm not going to be. Listen, compared to the other people in your building who were filming so, porn. So, yes. Yes. <laughs> So it's funny because where I live now, both neighbors on both sides uh-huh. have come to me when they've had parties. I'm like, right. hey, I'm going to have a party. You know, do you mind? I'm like, you can have a rave in your house that I don't give a shit. <laughs> but it's never, but it's never the house. Like, this is the thing I've noticed. It's never the house, like, directly behind you or directly next yeah. to you. It's always somebody who's, like, four houses away. I was like, you could have a rave. I don't care. If I were to ever have a problem... I would tell I'll you go directly. Tell you, I'm right. not gonna call the cops. Yeah, I'll knock on the door and be like, "Hey, you know, or maybe the next day after you right. had your big fun, right, right, I'll right. be like, <laughs> okay, like, listen, maybe whatever. But I'm, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna be that person. I'm not it's that like guy. I'm not gonna ruin somebody's fun if they're having fun and it's a Friday or a Saturday. I don't care if it's two or three a.m. I'm not gonna even, be that person. Even on a Sunday, I may let you go till like eleven. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna be that person. I know some people are very like hardcore about that. It's like you know, it's, it's, it's noise ordinance and blah blah blah. And I'm like, okay. Well, Whatever. Like, okay. the, you know, like, I just I don't care, and I I don't I don't care either. Like that's that's the thing I, I don't, don't especially care. if it's good music. If I see people <laughs> having fun and having a good time, why am I gonna ruin right. it? Why am I gonna be a, you know a wale la fiesta? I mean I don't know like I I, I never have. <laughs> so it's funny because when I was talking to my friend, I'm like, 
oh my god, you would have totally called the cops on my party. How old is your friend? Our age. Okay, so it's like youngish. You yes. Know? It's, it's not somebody who's. Yes. You know, no, 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 no. Do I know this person? Uh, sort of. Okay. Yes. Um, a yeah. I'm like, but all you know, whatever. I started thinking. Do you know that I started thinking like really deep thoughts about this? I, and I, I don't know <laughs> if this is a Latin thing because I think most Latins wouldn't care. Like for the most part, it has I to be an extreme situation for a Latino to. Yeah, because Latins are the ones who have big parties in their house. Yeah. You know. You know another thing. Actually, you complain is, today. Tomorrow I, it's you. I actually thought about this really big. I don't know if this is a Latin thing or a regional thing. Okay. But here in South Florida, when we have parties, we have them outside. We rarely have a party inside the house. Well, yeah, because you don't get on la casa. Of course. <laughs> because when I think of like... <laughs> because when the party's done, tu coges la manguera y ya... Exactly. Y that's it, when I done. think of white people having parties, and this is not like an insult, but when I think of like white America having a party up it north... It's indoors. It's well, indoors. Yeah, but I guess also in... well. I don't I know. I guess it is a regional thing because I mean, if you're the up weather, north, the weather, the yeah. weather. So yeah. I don't know if it's a regional thing, but yeah. like, think about every movie of the '80s where they had parties. Like, it was always like it a, was always like in a basement when they or would a say, rec room. When they would say a house party, it was literally a in house the house. Party. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and uh, no, eso se hace en la terraza. Like, yeah, <laughs> and you don't do that in the house. Never. Like in your house, especially because your parents were the type is like, nope, nobody's Nobody going in the, in the house. house. Nope. Paira <laughs> baño nomás. Yep. <laughs> Like, like, I remember my parents have been a little bit more, like, a little bit more, less strict about that. The only time I had a party that I allowed people in the house was a Halloween party I had in high school. And if you remember, it's because my parents had gotten new furniture for the family room. And they got written, gotten rid of the old one. So the family room in my parents' house, which you know is really big, yeah, yeah, yeah. was completely empty. That's right. I don't know if you remember. And that's yeah, yeah, the yeah. only time that I think I've ever had a party in the house. But other than that, eso se hace la terraza. But so, pa eso tenemos una terraza bien buena. Yeah, so I don't know if it's a regional thing. But yeah, Cubans and Latins don't have parties inside the house. <laughs> like... I think it's a cultural thing too. Yeah. I think but but okay, but back to what I was going to say. I don't know again if it's a cultural um a Cuban thing, a Latin thing, whatever. I think that this whole like let people party attitude that we have, we're not going to ruin your party has to do with Cuba. <laughs> Because in Cuba, you know, especially in the first few years of revolution, uh -huh. you know that in every corner of like every block, there was a person of a comité. A comité, yeah, yeah, Right. Yeah, yeah. Who would, you know, snitch on everything. Th their sole purpose was the neighborhood snitch. Right, snitch. Yeah. So people couldn't have parties. People couldn't have fun. That's true. Because I know that my parents, like, my parents, I didn't think about that. My parents have all these stories of like they tried to get like seven people together in a house. Like, y para que eso se están reuniendo. my father has this great story. Yes, yes. <laughs> that they tried to have a party at somebody's house, and I think there was like 10 of them. And they got like a record. They were able to find a record player. And like they went dressed to the nines. And when my dad says his story, I love it because it involves a jar of olives. <laughs> because my dad's like, <laughs> no, imagínate that we even for like food for the party, we got a jar of olives. <laughs> like, like if the jar of olives was like freaking like the buffet. Oye, conseguir aceituna. After the, After the revolution, revolution, olives were hard to come Shit. by. And my dad's like, no, I remember your mom even, her my, my grandmother made her a dress. And like, I remember she was wearing a yellow dress. And we were all o sea, like big 20. Deal. We were like, I don't know, whatever age they were. Um, and when, you know, the 10 of us, the party started, somebody from a comité called and 10 people with guns came to break the party up. And I'm like, maybe that's how we're like, oh my god, you know, because there's a history with that. So you know? we're just like, you know what? Party. Yo no voy a ser el comité. <laughs> I'm not party. gonna be the comité. No, but I'm, I've, I, I I've just, called neighbors that I've called the cops on. In my parents' house, I called the cops a bunch of times at the people in the corner. Remember that that lived that their house stood out like a sore thumb. Yes, 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 yes. Because yes, yes. all the houses in my parents' block are like nice and that one except for them look like you know it Medraya. was yes and they were they were selling drugs out of that house like they were like you know when really expensive cars come to your house stop for a minute in and the keep road, going and keep going and somebody comes in and out in the middle of suburban westchester yes yeah so Something's we called them on that and then you know my parents front diagonal neighbor one time was beating up his dog so 
Okay, these are valid reasons. So I called the cops. These are valid reasons. But oh yeah. Yes. yeah. But it's so funny because yeah, both of my neighbors on both sides now, they they were like, oh, do you mind? I'm like, niña, throw a party, yeah. throw a rave. I don't care. I'm like, you knock the, yourself co- out. The cops may come, but it's not because it's not I me. called them. Just so you know, <laughs> it's not going to be me. And it's funny because my my next one of my next door neighbors, they really took that to heart, and they have parties all the time. Good for them. All the time. Good for and them. It's fr- and from my backyard. I could, I'm like, glad like the party is in my backyard probably. Hey, right there. So, yeah. It's good cool. for them. So, let people party. Ay, total. Life is too short. Life is too short. If La vida es un carnaval. If, <laughs> no hay que llorar. If the corona quarantine has taught us anything about is that life is too short and you never know when you may not be able to hang out with your friends. Yeah. And then you can party. Then you have yeah. to Zoom party. You have to Zoom party. And you know what? It's fine, but it's not the same. And you know, you're, now, if something I've learned about the Zoom partying is that you always have that one friend that has a low internet bandwidth. So they're they're Zooming in slow motion or pixelated Zoom. I'm trying to think which one of the friends it was. Actually, one of the, one of the times it was me because like... Well, but you guys are sharing the No, 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 too. no, 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 no. Because the bandwidth in my house goes out. Like the inner, whatever Comcast. Oh, the devil. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, the devil. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's fine. So let people party, people. I uh, wait. Speaking of Comcast, did you get HBO Max this week? No, but I heard it's a shit show. I don't know about a shit show. It's just uh, so we have it because Jose has HBO Go. Mm-hmm. So automatically, I have HBO something. I have it on my phone. And so, <laughs> so automatically, they let you have HBO Max. But the problem is, like, so you can't do it. You can't do it like I have a Roku TV. You can't do it through that. So he had to do it through Apple TV in order to download the app. It all to Helenge. But honestly, right now, I mean, it's got a couple of things, but it's nothing to write home about. Okay. Oh, my app updated itself to HBO Max. So what did you have? You probably had HBO Go before. No, I had another one. I had the HBO that. HBO Now? Yes, I had HBO Now. Okay. So what I think it's interesting. Honestly, most of the programming, like I'm, I'm flipping through it and I'm like, okay, friends. Do, do you I have can... Showtime? I do not, but Jose does. Okay, because I, I need, I want to watch Billions. <laughs> oh, I'm sure he'll give you the. Password. You know what I think is so funny that we, as a group of friends, like, okay, you have Hulu, I have Amazon. I don't know who has Netflix. Yeah, we all like did, we we, we, all, we, we we figure it yeah, out. We figure it out. We so figure it's it like, out. We pay one subscription okay. and give it. Away. <laughs> It's communal, people. Yes, it is. It's a- it is. <laughs> totally is. So, um... Uh, but no, right now, the programming on HBO Max, for the most part, like, I'm flipping through it, and I'm like, oh, Big Bang Theory. I can watch that 14 okay. times a day Actually, on Actually, what I wanted friends. to mention to you... I can see that on the Well, that's what I wanted to mention to you. With this whole thing of friends right. leaving... Netflix. What was it? Netflix. Netflix. Mm-hmm. And going to HBO Max, right. and people are like, oh, my God, the world is falling, you know. Um, first world problems. Friends is on like 24 hours a day. That's what I was... Friends is always on. Like It's always on. It's hard not to have friends yeah, on. it's easier to miss friends than to... Yeah, yeah than so I'm like, what are people so like hung... Like upset about? It's always on, which I'm not complaining. I love friends. But right, but what was it but being Helenge? Yeah. yeah, so it's like, it's not like, you know, you're looking for, I don't know, um, It's a Living and it's... Always, that should be on there. It's a Living, they... <laughs> I think it was last year. They did a marathon on, on logo. logo. Yeah. And then and of course missed it. And then I found it on my guide and I put it like to record but you the whole didn't, series. But you didn't have logo. But I didn't have logo. <laughs> because, and it was such a like it's a you know, tease. Yes. Because like it was on my guide. And like when I p- would press it to living, it would give me like the preview. So I'm like, oh, you know, because on my guide, like h- channels that I don't have are not like highlighted. Oh, okay, okay. But this looked normal. So like I just... there. And then I'm like, I go back. I'm like, oh, I'm it's exciting. And then I'm like, oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I have to go back to like the 20 episodes they have on YouTube that are all bad quality. I, the other day, I was talking about It's a Living the other day. I was, what's the show that Angelian did where Fulana slept here? Uh, yeah, something slept here. I saw one episode. It was pretty bad. Yeah, it's terrible. It's horrible. And that's <laughs> like, the other day, actually, I was reading something about the Golden Girls. And I was reading that the set of the kitchen Mm -hmm. was left over from the first season of some show. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to find the show on YouTube. And I did. And the show was with um, Helen Hunt is in the show. The show's like from 1981, 82. And they did only one season. Helen Hunt was in it and Doris Day was in it as well. It's probably the Doris Day show. No, it was called something else. Um, 
And Doris Day's a lawyer and her husband's a doctor. And I'm like, I've seen that before. <laughs> with, with the Huxtables. <laughs> but somehow they, they didn't have the charm of Cliff nope, and didn't Claire. Work, didn't work when they were white. <laughs> it didn't work when they were white. No. Sorry. Um, and it's funny because Helen Hunt is in the show. how Billy Bird is on it too, which I love her. Do you remember her? Who? Billy Bird. If you see her, you know who she is. I'm sure. Um, and thus, it's the same kitchen. It's the exact same kitchen. It's the, the only thing different is because their show... They were in a high rise in Chicago, so the okay. the scenery outside of the window was like of another building. Okay, okay, but the set is exactly the same. Wow. Yeah. So I looked it up just for that, and it's funny because then I read the comments, and all the comments were like, "Who's here because of the Golden Girls? Who's here because of the kitchen?" <laughs> and then you'll have that one person. Oh, this looks like the Golden Girls kitchen. It's like it, it is, is the, the Golden, Golden Girls, Girls kitchen. kitchen. Like whatever. Oh lord. <laughs> But yeah, the only thing on HBO Max right now, I mean, I saw that Love Life show with uh, Anna Kendrick. It was cute. But actually, the one thing that I enjoyed watching was the the Elmo talk show. Oh, really? It's so cute. Is it new, though? It's new. It's it's the it's the Not Too Late show with mm-hmm. Elmo. And it's mm-hmm. Elmo basically has to do a, a talk show um, right before he has to go to bed. Oh. Oh, that's cute. I love it's Elmo. It's so cute. And it, it's just, it's so funny. Cookie Monster is Ed McMahon. So do we know anybody has Quibi? Uh, no, and that's the problem. So that's the problem they're facing. So Quibi had all these trailers of these like really like super high end, super high end yeah. shows. Like I'm your driver, I'm your passenger, and then the passenger from hell. And then there was one with Sansa Stark in it as well. There's the one with uh with Miley's ex husband. Or... But for some reason, the one that piqued my interest the most, which I don't even care for her, is the one of Nicole Richie. <laughs> Did you actually watch that? No, I didn't. Oh, well, that's right because none of us have Quibi, so <laughs> how are you gonna watch it? Yeah, and it's funny because all these other ones, which like the previews end in like tremendo cliffhangers, and the production is like crazy, and it's like you could tell it's like good content. The one that you're interested in, the, is one, the one that, that I'm like. like filmed on like a I'm phone. Like, is there like a free trial for Quibi? <laughs> like, there probably is actually. I think it's a seven day trial. What's her name? Nikki. Nikki Fresh. Nikki Fresh. I think it's Nikki Fresh. <laughs> I love the scene which she was like, oh, because I'm going to be the first black and the guy's like, wait, you're black? <laughs> her, actually, I think she's Latina. Eta. Like by birth. Like her biological parents. Yeah, because Latina de ella, Chile. Oh. Like gen- biological? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, also though, she's part Latin, at least. Yeah, she's half Latin or whatever. But yeah, the problem with Quibi, <laughs> so it's like all these good shows are the ones, and I, I don't even care for Nicole Richie, you know, like. But there's something about I, that. When I saw, I told you, I'm like, I don't know if this is like, because what piqued my interest was like, I don't know if this is like a real, like f- fake reality show, right? Or if it's right. a reality show that's laughing at real. Uh, Okay. Like a Borat type of thing. Yes. Where like yes. she knows what's going to happen, but nobody else does. Yes. Right. Like it's a fake reality show laughing at fake reality shows. Right. right. Or is it a fake reality show like Keeping Up with the Kardashians and right, where what she, the surreal life, what she yeah, was in, yeah, yeah. you know, all that. Yeah. I think it's a fake reality show laughing at fake reality yeah, shows. Yeah. I think she's in on the joke, but she gets the upper hand on other people. Yes. Yeah. So that's yeah. why I piqued my interest. <laughs> but nobody has Quibi, so I'm not getting so Quibi. you're going to get it. But if you get Quibi, you let me know. I will let you, you know. know. I, I have no interest in Quibi. I have no... In- I, I told you this from before. Is it because this girl has a show? That she's a judge? Well, there's that. because there's there's nothing that has Chrissy Teigen has ever been good. Mm. Um, but no, oh I God. just... I just don't... I don't get it. I don't understand why I would pay to watch 10-minute content. I just don't. I just don't. For that, I'll be like, just put it on Hulu and give it to me as like a limited series for three episodes or whatever. And what they're finding is, because what happened with Quibi, and I'm going to put on my marketing nerd hat on right now, all the research that they saw was half right. What they were finding is that, yeah, everybody and their mother's consuming, you know, 10 minutes of content, 10 minutes of content. But 10 minutes minutes of of content content of a longer show. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And what happens is that in your brain... Despite the production value, what your brain says is if this is only 10 minutes long, it's probably lower quality. And if I'm going to watch something low quality for 10 minutes, I can just go to YouTube for free and watch my favorite influencer do a little skit. They're not going to see 10 minutes of like a high Hollywood production. You know, so that's where they made the mistake. And quite frankly, it's But some of these do look like they have a high production value. But that's the point. That's the point. People, the time limit automatically shuts people down and the fact that you have to pay for something that's so short i think the price point the price point is what's is 7.99 a month uh, probably that's not i mean that's what how much is netflix like 
$9.99? Like, let's say $10, 10 11 bucks. Because I know so, Hulu's $5.99. Okay. So, okay. So, exactly. So, Hulu, which has endless content, is cheaper yeah. than this that has limited content that is limited in, 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 <laughs> in, in duration. scope yeah. and duration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's funny because I think people, was it, was it I Kat, think that's Kat, the problem with price Kat, content. Is it Katzenberg? I, think, I forget who it is that started it, the, the head of it. It's interesting because I've been seeing everybody come out and say that the quarantining and the COVID has been a boon to their business. You know, like all the TV stations are happy right now. All the cable stations, Discovery has posted, I don't know how much growth and ratings because everybody's stuck at home and they're watching, blah, blah. He's the only person to come out and blame COVID for the unsuccessfulness of Quibi. And I'm like, sir, that is a false thing to say because if anything, people are stuck at home well, and they're going to want to consume more content that they've never consumed before. Yes, but I would say that maybe because their whole premise is being on the go and people are not on the go. Well, that's another problem. They're it not was, interested. It, in it was also not compatible with a TV. They're working on that now. Oh, right. So the only place you watch them on your phone. On your phone, your Right, because I think of Quibi, like I think of being stuck in the subway, the crowded subway in rush hour like and, a, and, and, yeah. and watching a, Quibi. Yeah, like a road trip or, yeah, or whatever. Or whatever. Waiting, just waiting, waiting in line. Meeting, at the doctor's office. Uh, waiting in line at Starbucks, you know, right, right. while you got your stuff and watching a Quibi. Right. And that's how they sold it. And yeah, you're right. There was no Quibi app for smart TVs. Right. And then people are not, it's, it's, it's the opposite. People are not on the go. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. But I still think, I mean, as often as we're on our phone and I, tablets. But I think it's a price point. Oh, for sure. I, I think, I, and I'm, they have big names behind that. Yeah. They got to pay for that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, they have Sansa Stark. Yeah. I mean, she left Winterfell to go. <laughs> to go and what is it, fall out of an airplane? What is her, her thing? She's yeah. Like she, plane crash yeah, or yeah, yeah. Right? And, yeah. you know, whatever. So, well, quit yeah. me. So, Funny, actually, um, Reno 911, you're familiar with it, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> It's actually come back now on Quibi. Oh yeah, and you know who has a uh, Oscar? Oscar? Yes, Oscar. I yeah, saw Oscar that. from Spanish Like for Presents. I saw it. And I was oh, like, yeah, Oscar está acabando. Está en todo. Oscar's like creeping up on stuff, you know. Está en todo. Like, now, when you least expect it, Oscar shows up. When I think of H and R Block, now I think of Oscar. I think of Oscar at the little dance. <laughs> Thirty five hundred. <laughs> <laughs> That's um Oscar from Spanish Like Presents. Yes, yes. Um, so yeah, well, well, Quibi, Quibi. Yeah. What does Quibi mean again? Quick bites. Quick bites. Again, 10 minutes or less. Ay, que hambre tengo ahora. I am very hungry. Ay, you know, uh, I can't. Well, no. Tú por si acaso que lo del corazón was no. not, was, was, you know, not muscular. You know, you, you... I'm trying to watch my mouth. Yeah, uh -huh. watch your mouth. Uh -huh. I don't know. Tomate una sopita, un caldo. It's funny because in Spanish you say, me estoy aguantando la boca. So I'm, in English you'll be I'm like, hold I'm, my ho mouth. I'm gonna hold my I'm mouth. hold my mouth. <laughs> <laughs> be like, okay, now what? Yeah, I'm gonna hold my mouth. Oh my gosh, I just stopped talking because I was looking at you writing. <laughs> well, that's something you don't hear in Pero Let Me Tell You a lot. That's Silence. True. I was like, why is he not saying things? I know he has things to say. I, I like, I lost my train of thought yeah. and I'm like looking at you writing and I'm te like, vi, oh. And I'm like, okay, well, maybe he's looking at my penmanship. So, well, we'll talk about it next week. The final, the final episode to Fuller House. Yes, we'll talk about that next week because... We can talk about the episode that we were there for. Yes. Yes, <laughs> yes. yes, yes, yes. Of course. Of yes. course. Of course, they've held our episode back for the second batch of the final season. Well, we're totally okay with that. And yeah, save the fine. best for last. Absolutely. So, yeah. it's. it's I can't a, wait to see what takes they used. It's funny because <laughs> in the 30, in that commercial, uh -huh, the, the yeah, trailer yeah, for, yeah. for the last nine episodes, yeah. there's only one small clip of our episode. Which it's in, it's when Max is wearing the bat, hat hack backwards. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he kind of... Goes like yeah, that to his yeah. mom, Candace. So, yeah. So, man, that's somebody. Candace Cameron Bure, do you follow her? I don't. That You're talking about all these channels that have, like, done well. That girl has maximized the quarantine like there's no tomorrow meetup. Really? She has cooking segments. She has fitness segments. She has reading the Bible segments. She has children's, sex, she has children's book segments. She has gardening segments because she's at home. And then the other day, she got rid of a bunch of clothes and she auctioned them off. Like, she is like 24 seven. Like, that, the hustle of that girl wow. is like, oh, yeah. Oh, Have yeah. you actually, now that you say that, I, I've been hearing a lot of people say that they're like more tired now during, during the quarantine. Do you feel like you've been doing, like you've been more active in some weird way? Hello, I have a bakery going on from my house. <laughs> like, I'm like baking. <laughs> like, it was my mom's, it was my mom's birthday this week. And I'm like, I'm going to bake your gourmet cake. 
I mean, I've, I've baked like 10 cakes and like from everything is from scratch. From scratch yes. Like everything is from scratch. I've baked cakes, cupcakes, loaves, bread. It's like, I'm making bread. Why am I baking bread? Like, listen, you're taking Karen, whatever her name's, Karen. you know, food out of her mouth. Por favor. Stop baking bread. Why am I baking? And I love it. Like I started watching YouTube videos on like how to perfect your buttercream. Oh, I should watch that. Yeah. <laughs> Oh my god, we have to say this story. Oh, absolutely. Okay, so a couple of weeks ago, Ish <laughs> um, brought all of us, and it was very sweet of him, some cup- cupcakes that he had made, some strawberry cupcakes. And everything was made from scratch. Well, they were pineapple cupcakes with strawberry Okay, everything frosting. was Okay, everything was made from scratch. Yep. I used real and, pu- pineapple chunks and everything. And he's not much of a baker, but then again, neither am I. Um, or I, I love to cook and I'm, I'm a pretty good... I think I'm good. more of a baker than you. Like, I bake more often. You are, because I'm yeah. not a baker. Prior to the coronavirus, I was not a baker at, at all, all. At all. Like, like I, I, I bake. Like, I bake, like, you know, I make cookies for Christmas. I make Jose's birthday cake. So. You baked a lot more than I did. Yeah. So he he was like he sent all of us a text like hey I'm gonna pass out uh, I'm gonna make cupcakes for you guys you know from scratch blah 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 so he drops off the cupcakes and I, you know I I try the cupcakes and the cupcake itself the cake was was fine it was great it was a little heavy yeah but it, it was a little fine. dense it was yeah. fine um, but the buttercream <laughs> was off to put it nicely and I was like it was chunky I was like I can't figure out what's wrong with the buttercream. Because and for the record, that was like the third time I tried to make it. Because I've, I, uh, despite the fact that I don't bake, I had made buttercream before, and buttercream is just that it's butter, butter. and powdered sugar blended, and that's, that's it. all it is. Nothing in ciencia. And I couldn't figure out what I'm like. But what did he do? Like, he's a smart guy. Like, like what? And the other day, I asked him. I'm like, you made your frosting because you were like. I don't know. The frosting came out wrong. Yeah, I mean, it the, the buttercream came out wrong. Should not be chunky. It was like, like crystallized. I asked him. I'm like, did you melt the butter? <laughs> he did. I did. So he did buttercream with melted butter, pobrecito. And I'm like, no, the butter has to be room temperature, and it can't. You can't. That process you cannot skip. So I learned that because I made some uh, strawberry tarts. Actually, I have some in the fridge. Before you go. Um, and I let the butter sit like on the uh-huh. windowsill and, 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 and everything off. came off. I mean, there's no buttercream in it, but it came, yeah. it, it made a difference. Yeah. When they say room temperature butter, you can't skip the room temperature butter yeah. part of it. It's not microwave. It's not microwave. Because microwave makes it too hot. You can't microwave it to room temperature. It's room temperature. Yeah. You just, you just have to let it go. It's cool. Well, you know what you, you have, I have in my house, I always have, um, a little thing by the microwave actually, which is a soft butter holder. Which I leave a stick of butter out and I cover it. I don't use butter that often, so I just I keep the butter always in like the fridge. It doesn't go out bad. It's no, butter. but I don't have as much counter space as you do either. Okay, that's true. So, <laughs> but now he knows how to make proper buttercream. Yes. But yeah, no, like I'm dehydrating fruit and shit as garnish. <laughs> Let me say something. Your citrus, whatever lemon yeah. cake thing was delicious. The other yeah. day I ate all of it. Yep. And, did, and didn't it taste like real lemon? I ate all of it the other day because a Jose le regresó the beginnings of the diverticulitis feelings. Oh, no. So I was like, well, this cake is not can't last too much longer. Yeah. So I have to eat it. And I literally yeah. ate it was un trozo like this. Yeah. yeah. No, no, no. And it tasted like fresh lemon, right? Because yeah. that was my whole thing. I, I don't want it to taste like lemon flavor. No, 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 no. no. It tasted I really was good. I was like, that. the cake had like three lemons in it. Well. And when I mean lemons, I mean the juice and the zest. Are you, okay, both. Yeah. Yeah, because that's what makes it fresh. Job well done, sir. So, so now I'm like a baker. My cousin, Roger... Well, Roger really knows about food. Well, and Roger has his own chocolate company. Chocolate company. <laughs> Roger had both of them. He had the lemon cranberry cake I made and okay. the strawberry, um, the lemon strawberry one. Oh, this is the one that I had. And he was like amazed. He's like, oh my God, this is like great. It's like, you could sell this. And I'm like, hmm. <laughs> We'll put that on the back burner for that other thing we, thing we're, 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 gonna, we're working yeah, on. So we're going to work on when, I mean, at this point, honestly, it's going to have to be next year. Well, no, we go. I mean, there's still six months left of the year. Fair enough, but the, but remember what we want. Where we want to launch it are things that probably won't be happening until next year again. That's true, but whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about figure that, that out. So I'm thirsty. Yes, very much so. Do you have a last soda? Actually, I don't. So let's do I a do. joined co- uh, soda. Yes. Okay, perfect. Otherwise, I'm just gonna give it to the giraffe. The giraffe. Just the giraffe in general. The giraffe is nature, as we say, <laughs> nature's most unappreciated <laughs> animal. It's so true. My my favorite animals are llamas and giraffes. What does that say about me? Uh, awesome things. 
You know, I was never that little boy that was like, oh, my favorite animal is a, a shark. My favorite animal is a tiger because I like vicious animals because I'm Why a boy. Why did you sound like Napoleon Dynamite it's, when you said that? <laughs> well, what's his favorite animal? The liger. Well, no, that's true. But what pet does he have? A llama. A llama. Linda, come get your ham, you fat lard. <laughs> Fair enough. Napoleon Dynamite is such a great movie. It really is. I haven't seen it in forever. It really, really is. You know, you know it's so it funny. Again, it was a funny little, little, little story before... Um, the last soda. The last soda. So, I, I I watched Napoleon Dynamite. Obviously, when it came, I didn't watch it when it came out. I actually rented it, but during the Napoleon Napoleon mm-hmm. Dynamite era, and I feel that like Napoleon Dynamite got even more popular when it went to video because they started airing it well, on yeah. MTV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's the definite. And I freaking, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my life before Napoleon Dynamite and after, and I totally ate up the movie and I loved it. And I bought the Vote for Pedro t-shirt. Remember I had it? Yes. And I remember th- those were the years that I was in, in law school. So I come down to, to Florida for, you know, vacation. And I go with my parents to Universal Studios. The, the whole family goes. And I think my brother and my father were like, ¿Qué es este pullover? ¿Qué es este pullover? Because I had the Vote for Pedro right, t-shirt. Right. Which you know it was, remember? It was, a, it was like a ringer tee. It was a ringer tee in white with a, in with red the, and the, the letters. letters yeah. And like, esas son las rarezas tuya. Because you know my parents, my parents think I dress very weird. Right. And because, anything that they don't know about is rareza tuya. Es rareza tuya. Right, yo, right. Or as my mom say, yo nunca he visto nadie puesto eso. And I'm like, well, because you know, you're not in touch with, you know, the youth of America. <laughs> you don't know. Maybe your mother has a part-time on Hot Topic. <laughs> <laughs> and you know, because I don't dress from Joss A. Banks or Brooks Brothers like my brother does, even right. for like, to go to Publix. You know, I'm like the outcast weird dresser. Esas son las rarezas tuyas. Vota por Pedro. ¿Qué es eso? ¿Quién es Pedro? And I'm like, never mind. I go to Universal Studios. The this mundo, was, this the was at the high peak. Peak, peak Napoleon peak Dynamite. Everybody mundo, had right, to do with my shirt. Everyone. And I saw several people wearing the shirt. Right, right, right. But everyone had to do with the shirt. I was like, see, motherfuckers? Like, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so it felt good. It felt good that everywhere, everywhere, you know, we went to Islands of Adventure. Everywhere was like, everybody was like, ah, vote for Pedro. Oh, I voted for Pedro. Oh, my God, I love that movie. And I'm like, hello. Like, I got my finger on the pulse of things. Yeah, whatever, parents. You don't know anything. God. Yeah. Uh, so La Soda or La Soda <laughs> so La Soda um, we're actually going to give the La Soda to it's it's <laughs> did you say a Persian? Uh, the Heifer Corporation oh it's um, a charity that's actually taking place it started on May 27th and ends May 31st and it's called Ask Chefs Anything and it's a uh, it's a Miami organization uh, that's happening lots of local chefs the the owners of Sandwich Chef Adrian oh, Panther yum. Coffee um, a whole bunch of people who I'm sorry I know that I'm going to forget and basically it is they're raising funds for immigrant workers in the food industry mm. because you know these are people who are now have no jobs they have no unemployment benefits so chefs and industry tastemakers from across the city and they have a list here like uh, Antonio Bashur Michelle Bernstein oh nice um, Raul de Molina uh, you know Danny and Rosa from Sandwich they're auctioning off 30 minutes of their time to share their favorite recipes and cooking tips. Oh, yum. And so they're doing this, you know, again, until the 31st. But I can definitely see this as having something that has legs and that could go on forever. And I think, you know, again, in this time where we've all been giving back, one of the things is we've started to hopefully realize how many people are affected by these types of things that we don't think about. You know, um, in this case, you know, it's the immigrant, the immigrant food workers, um, you know. Bartenders, these mm-hmm. are all people who are being affected by this and can't necessarily go and claim an unemployment, you know, yeah. because a lot of them don't. And they, even if they could, and even if they could, be, by the nobody, time that it nobody gets I them, know, nobody I know that claimed unemployment in like mid to late March o sea, has gotten their unemployment benefits. Yeah, so, but that's a conversation for, for another, another episode. Yeah. So, I mean, sit and wait. But, you know, so I, th- I think it's great that these guys are doing something and. It speaks volumes, and we know some of these people personally, and we know who, I mean, I, I know them personally, not well, but personally, um, you know they're good people, mm-hmm. and they are about their community, and I think yeah. that's what we hopefully will see more and more yeah. of coming out of no, this. No, and it's good that and they, hope they go thought away. about a group of people that is so underrepresented, um, especially in things like this, you know, because they're undocumented and they don't receive any other type of benefit that they actually thought about it, so... 
Yep. Kudos to them. A last soda to them. A last soda to them and all the so. immigrant food workers. So, well, we're back. We're back, baby. So, we hope everybody listened, laughed, and learned. And as more of you start getting in your commute and listening to us again, because I'm sure there's people that listen to us in their commute that weren't working that were like, oh. <laughs> yeah. I'm not listening to those guys I'll, right I'll now. I'll catch up. I'll catch, I'll catch up. up. I'll, I'll catch up. up. So, we hope you listened, laughed, and learned. And remember to grab your croqueta, your pastelito, and your jupina. And thank you so much for joining us. Have a great weekend. Have a great Friday. And that was episode 112. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, yeah, thank you ever, so much, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while. You make me nervous. It's, it's what happens. I haven't stood in front of you in a while. I know. Yes, okay. So, I'm wearing a shirt. Oh, my Oh my God. Let's not even talk about that. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Bye, Virgente. Pero Let Me Tell You is co-hosted by Darian Borges and Ismael Llano, produced by Ismael Llano, and our theme, Pero Let Me Tell You Freestyle, is composed by Michael Angelo Lomlaplex, the official gay guy. And don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review on iTunes. 